you're listening to the Rebel Scum Podcast. You are always scum. Rebel Scum. From odds making to list rankings, we've got you covered. And don't forget to join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. Whenever you're ready. ongoing saga of me and my love for Clone Wars, now that it's back, it's finally hit me that I can finally rewatch Rebels. I know maybe I should wait till the end of the new season, but I love it. I am really excited to rewatch it. Uh, have you thought about rewatching Rebels at all? I have. Uh, was it Thursday was Rebels Remembered, I believe? Uh, March nope. 5th was the finale. The series finale debuted on March 5th. In America and Canada, we had to wait a little while, so we had to find other alternatives to watch it on time. Uh, absolutely, I love Rebels. Rebels is some of my favorite Star Wars content to date. I think it is underrated, uh, and I hope Disney Plus shines a new light on it and people get to enjoy it uh, more. Yeah. It's it's great. I'm really excited to rewatch the last season. I know that's sort of jumping the gun, but like I just was thinking about that whole stuff with Palpatine and like this like world between worlds. So I really want to rewatch that now that we've seen a little bit more of Palpatine. And when I get there, we'll re- I'll bring it up on the podcast. That's <laughs> this podcast, Rebel Show Podcast. I'm Brock. This is James. Oh my gosh. That's me. Yeah, I'm James. Like pause that was. We're talking Star Wars. There's either a pause or was a delay in the internet connection. It's a beautiful <laughs> it's a beautiful winter evening outside. It's like springtime almost. You can feel spring and my internet's acting like it's a blizzard. I don't know what's going on. Uh, yep. but Brox here, you're looking lovely. It's looking lovely right now. You yep. sound great as per usual. Uh, we gotta point out, Brock, though, on Sunday, March 8th, our 159th episode debuted and that featured uh some of our favorite uh women in the star wars fandom for international women's day i was hosted by aaron and it featured the likes of girls with sabers galactic podcast (laughs) well i almost screwed up podcast (laughs) i don't say it enough weekly force toast a star wars happy hour podcast and we had heidi and and uh, Rachel from our, our Patreon scores as well Ch- chime in with some what it's like being a Star Wars fan and also giving us the odds and top five and his top five canon novels. And Laura from Force Toast breaks those down and gives her, her you her top five. And in there, Brock, one of them happens to be the Rise of Skywalker novelization. She put that in there. The novelization was in the ranking, and she said that it, you know, as a movie, she, she you know she was like whatever with the movie, but this kind of helped her get past stuff that she wasn't very satisfied with in the movie, and she uh, she encourages everyone to read it who is a Star Wars fan, a Rise of Skywalker fan, and even those who were moderately disappointed in the film. Nice, I'm excited to read it myself. Me too. So yeah, she I believe she got a copy at C2E2 in Chicago. Before coronavirus shut everything down, Chicago was like, we will <laughs> march on. <laughs> the coronavirus will not stop the rise of Skywalker. Really not know. even a little bit. <laughs> not even a little bit. Ray Carson wrote it. I cannot wait to get my hands on it and read it myself. Um, a little bit different. Uh, from the Bob Iger book I'm reading right now, but the same Disney company. Can't beat it. Uh, Yeah, Clone Wars, people watching Clone Wars. You know, it's funny on Twitter, um, the the, uh, spoilers are spoiled like they were for Mandalorian, but there's not as many. You know, it doesn't have the hype train that the Mandalorian has. And again, this is the seventh season of a series that has its audience. You know, some people are still catching up on it and they're going to get to it when they get to it. So it's this is a very different type of show to be put on there, you know. And and, and I, it, did it meet the fanfare, Brock, in your opinion, of the lost missions when they hit Netflix? 
I don't know. I feel like that still has to be seen. I mean, what? There's a lot of stuff that we saw prior to this because they 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 put out the animatics yeah. and stuff and what have you, or the like unfinished stuff. So I believe like the first couple episodes are stuff they wrote years ago. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, I don't hate it because I feel like one of the me- magic things about Clone Wars is they build to something else. Yeah. I, th- I feel like that's one of Filoni's things. Um, I have said, like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I really needed Echo to return because <laughs> after rewatching, I was like, when did Echo die? And I'm like, I had to look it up. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, this the third episode seems to be the cap of that one storyline. I could be wrong. I can. I will find. I thought soon, it went. But, uh, I thought it was going four, four, and four. I could be wrong, but I thought it was four, four, and four. But I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't hate it because I, I find the storylines of the, just the clones and their relationships really interesting. It's very Rex heavy, and to know he becomes such a big character in Rebels, as I already I love that show. <laughs> Um, it would be interesting because the last season they deal a lot with just sort of like the clones are falling apart. Like, so this can kind of work into it. And I think that's kind of the bad batch is interesting. Uh, I feel, I hope there's more to that because they made such a big deal out of it and they are an interesting group, but it's like, it's a weird dichotomy because it's sort of like their clones but they don't follow the same rules as the other clones, so it's sort of like, okay, that's that's great, but like, what's the point, right? Mm-hmm. So perhaps that will play out. I don't know. I like it. I like it though. I'm very easy. <laughs> Just give me more. I'm down. Well, Star Wars, of course. I think I think everything everything you know that Lucas does had a purpose, and this was all part of his story, right? So. I feel like there has to be a purpose to it. Maybe we're maybe not. Maybe this is just a, a one-off story that they wanted to do, and that's that. But time, time will, uh, time will tell on the Bad Batch, Clone Wars, and Company. What you, you mentioned your love for Rebels. Do you love the idea that that this Rebel sequel series could be coming at the end of the year, following Sabine and Ahsoka on their journey to find Ezra Bridger? It's like why aren't you why isn't it out yet you know what i mean it's like no maybe that was a long enough time to like uh, a gap uh and now that there's disney plus it's like why not make it like, you need to make content for it mm-hmm. so um i love that i didn't know that and that's fantastic because it's like we all know ashley Eckstein, Eckelstein. eckstein come back anytime eckstein Exical. uh she like she'll come back at any point i think and i would argue you need to put as much man the Lauren stuff out. Yes. So Sabine in her helmet, if she is gonna still wear the helmet, just keep just keep putting it in there. Just keep putting it in. What if they uh, were like, like yeah, I mean oh, they're like we're gonna do a Sabine they and really, a s- they really need to dive into they really need to dive into that exploration of like the unknown region yes. sort of thing and because like you could go there because that's what we assume is where thrawn and and um uh, ezra are so what if they're like we're doing this being an ahsoka show but it's live action Ooh, that's ballsy right there would be, but 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 then all of a sudden you get the fans that love Rebels are going to come and watch this live action show, and then you get the fans who are like, "I'm not watching Rebels; it's a cartoon for kids." And they're like, "Well, it's live action," and they're going to come and they're going to watch this show now. Now you've doubled your audience. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, not that I don't love it as an animated series. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It would be awesome if they played it as an animation and like the first like two minutes of animation, all of a sudden it turns into live action. You're like, oh, that'd be awesome. I'd be down for that. I think they need to, I've said it before. They need to just, just throw everything at us. Just be like, I have an idea. Disney plus I have an idea. Disney plus. And if it doesn't stick, move on, forget about it. 
we're all we'll all move on and forget about like if you look at all the star wars content on disney plus we just did the live stream on monday and we had to look up and see if forces of destiny was on disney plus it was but we didn't know that that's a there's you know there's only nine movies and a few series right now but it's still we don't know all the extent of all the content of star wars that's on there so if you start throwing things off in there and you know something sucks we're gonna forget about it and move on from it, and it'll, it'll hide away in the in the libraries of Disney Plus forever. And then somebody will stumble on it, and eventually somebody's gonna love it, and then it'll become a cult classic because that's how things happen. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, Mandalorian season two finished. Uh, they wrap season two, finished principal photography of season two. Did you see the uh, the slate? No, I did not. It had fish on it. I think it was fish. Let me look at it. I'm going to send it to you right now. Podcasting is always better when you text message each other what you're doing. But it's got like a fish on it. So it's like, and the Mando's near another fish. They're like salmon-y kind of fish. And I'm just like, it's directed by Dave Filoni. Scene 501, 501st. Um, Take one. (laughs) Director Dave Filoni. It's got two fish. There's always a bigger fish, but it's very yin yang. Also, I just sent it to you. You should have it any second now. And it's uh, through text message I sent it to you. And um, yeah, I don't know. Do you think that through text message? Do you think? <laughs> do you think that's a hint of what's to come in season two with these yin yang fishies? Maybe. With thrilling all, content. Like, like, thrilling content. content logo. Well, yeah, but what? But... Like, I worked on uh, American God season three, uh, uh, and they had a logo that like is not the production logo, so I could just be a. I don't know if like it anybody's tricked by it, but don't they call most productions by some different name so people can't like spy on it? But like, but this I don't is on. It tricks anybody anymore. Well, this is on like a closed set, right? So I don't think they need, really need to worry about that. Nothing is closed. <laughs> oh, they don't want it to. Hey, Baby Yoda was closed. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, man. They sat on... I still I still laugh when I look at that celebration footage. I'm like, you, you jerks. You're there with Baby Yoda. You know what's coming. Uh, they tricked us all. What do you want to see in season two of The Mandalorian? Um, Definitely more... Mandalorian stuff. I mean, I know it sounds so stupid, but like, I want to know more about this. This, this, uh, God, what was it called? What was the, the purge? The, 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 they were in the cohort. The what? Like the great, the big purge of the Mandalorians? The big, the, the purge? No, well, yeah, I mean, I know most of them may or may not be all dead, so, but the Mandalorians that he was with. The guild? No, oh, the guild. no, that's the bounty hunter guild. Anyways, like, yeah, but like, uh, I want a little, I want a little, I want to know a little bit more about that. If there's more out there, sort of, what is the state of the Mandalorians? Um, but obviously, like, more about Black Saber. That is, I think, what I'm really. In. It's amazing how giancarlo esposito becomes the big bad of that series and he's like he's barely in it <laughs> he's like like he he um it's uh, he almost does he even say anything really in the first episode he's in and then the second one it's just like and then he just comes out of that tie fight and you're like he gives wow. that monologue yeah. he's he promised okay i got i gotta throw you off base here for a bit bro because he was in an interview he's being interviewed he's in um star girl coming out on disney plus star girl <laughs> oh yeah star girl yeah, i wonder if he plays the big bad in that so he's, <laughs> he's playing star girl on disney plus family friendly motion picture That's on disney plus yes a disney plus straight to disney plus um anyway is it not, are we yeah go ahead are we what We're, are we turning into this this is a star girl podcast is that what we're gonna, we're gonna... no no like <laughs> Isn't there a Star Girl show coming up from DC? Because that's a Star Girl. All I know this is a this is a like a DC character. Well, this is a Disney Plus movie, like a young YA novel based on a yeah. YA novel called Star Girl. Uh, okay. No superpowers. She's just like I'm a. Yeah, they, I don't know which. I I don't know anything about it. All I know is the trailer came on my phone, 
and and they were singing a Beach Boy oh, song, yeah, yeah. and I, I and I loved it. Um, but anyway, he's on the he's on the show. Who? Why do I don't care? It's another thing. Anyway, so he's probably too impressed with that. But he mentioned talking about season two. He promised epic lightsaber battles in season two. Epic lightsaber cool. duel. What do you make of that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I feel like you got the dark saber. Is it dark saber or black saber? Dark saber. Black saber is Rogue dark One. Uh, okay, dark saber. Um, uh, ooh, almost close the Google hand. <laughs> uh, I mean, I feel like if you put it in, you got to do something with it. Now, I don't know how exciting it is if it's not Jedi's, but. Moff Gideon's not a Jedi, uh-huh. so it's a lot of hack and slash. And hey, hey, yeah, I'm for it. You know what? Screw it. I'm for it. Somehow the Mandalorian finds another lightsaber because he's like, well, I have to fight him somehow. But I don't know. Like, the dark saber doesn't really give you power per se. Though, whoever wields it basically has led the Mandalorian, so maybe that works. I don't know. What was the Reddit theory about the uh, the different helmets? It had to do with like you sided with Maul or you sided with Viz- Pre Vizsla. Oh, that I think it was? yeah, I think so. I think it was just to connect the armor to Maul. I think that's all it was. Which I don't hate. And that, no, that's it fine. Does work with like the armor because of the horns, but like I think that style of helmet where it's like rounded. I think it just means you're a female. Because I was rewatching when I was rewatching Clone Wars. I don't know if I've mentioned. Did it. you watch, rewatch Clone Wars? Like, Bo Katan has the same uh, helmet, and I, I only, I don't. I mean, maybe I gotta rewatch watch Rebels and I'll see it more. But I don't know. I think there's a there's a loophole in there. I think it's just that's just the female Mandalorian. You might be right. Helmet, but whatever. You might be right. That might Again, be. Again, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I don't have on the theory, but. It's Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a minute, everybody. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, like, going back to your original question. Yeah, uh, that's I I spend the whole... I hope it's... Grand, uh, grand, I keep, every time I say Moff, I want to say Grand Moff Tarkin. Uh, grand, uh, Moff Gideon. Like, make it half about him and half about Mandalorian and little, and little baby Kevin. That you can... Don't, don't give us any more storylines that don't have anything to do with anything like uh, but I, I like let's not deviate too far from those storylines you know what i mean like take us to a new place but somehow relate it back don't we don't need any filler episodes you've got some really engaging characters let's just stick with them there's a couple episodes of the mandalorian that i was like met on but but looking back on it would you consider any of them filler no but you know what i, I mean, know what you mean right? yeah. like it's that happens with like Rebels and Clone Wars all the time. But it, but even with Rebels though, it's those fillers episodes end up coming back. Exactly. Yeah. So like I don't want to poo poo them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like oh, hooray. Uh, but I hmm. I feel like season one was sort of an experiment and it went very very well. So now it's like oh, pull all the now pressure's on man. Now there's expectations. Oh, no. <laughs> the the problem now is there's expectations. People yeah. are going to go into it like, I'm expecting this. I want this. And it's like, chill. You're going to get what you're going to get. Don't get ahead of yourself. And and I, from what I'm seeing from, like, you know, the outsider perspective looking at all this, it doesn't seem like people are making predictions on this show so much, which I think is hel- – like, it's fun to speculate and talk, but I think it's – right now it's like, well, they got to bring Baby Yoda either to the Jedi or to Baby Yoda species planet. Hmm. And he's, Mando, Din Jaren, he's taking them to one of those. We're going to find out which one it is. Um, do, do you have a preference? Do you hope that they either find a Jedi or they look for a Jedi or they look for Yoda's species planet thing? I don't hate it. Um, but I prefer he just goes to the species planet. Because like, I'd rather know what Yoda and baby Yoda and Yaddle are. I didn't think I ever would want to know, but now I want to know. So um, I'd rather deal with that because it's sort of like 
But yeah, the, the, the presence of, uh, of, of Dark Saber, it's like, uh, you're just asking to bring Jedi in. But that's not terrible. It's Star Wars. But who would be the Jedi? <laughs> Luke? <laughs> uh, it's too early to be young Ben Solo. Well, it'd be really young Ben Solo. Okay, you can put in a Lord Senteca somehow. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyways, uh, no, I, I'm i okay with there being as little Jedi in this as possible. Well, I guess Big Yoda is a Jedi. But no, but he's I mean, not a Jedi. He's just a Force user. Exactly. And I'm more interested in that because I think that perhaps this species, this whatever you want to call it, alien, uh, <laughs> perhaps they are more attuned to the, the force than we think. And I think that would, that makes a lot of sense about you can really make an interesting story about that. Absolutely. I think his backstory is like as as curious as his future is, his backstory is, is almost as exciting because he's 50 years old when we meet him, which means he's around Phantom Menace time. So why wasn't he grabbed? Yep. Why wasn't he taken by the Jedi as a Force user at that point? They still would have been grabbing kids when he was a when he was a baby, right? And that's when they would want to get him, unless Yoda yep. species they grab around 50 years old. But who knows? So that's something else that intrigues me as well is why why is he out there who had him like you know i know you're gonna hate this but there's a circle back to like to maybe palpatine grab this infant because of because of what he knows of yoda and yoda's species maybe there's something at play with this baby all i hope is whatever it is yeah. uh favreau and co know the result of baby yoda they know why baby yoda is a target of this i hope they're not just making that up as yeah. they go along yeah uh yeah i think i think there's a lot you can explore i hope there isn't a lot of new characters or at least i i i think it's kind of unavoidable because people want to be in these star wars projects so <laughs> yeah i don't know and like they as much as there isn't a lot of characters in the first season there is you know like there's a lot of like just comedians alone there's like handfuls of people just doing small minor characters and you're like oh it's that guy it's that guy it's that guy <laughs> it's a dream come true actually i'm surprised that they announced sasha banks the wrestler was going to be in this where they've been tight-lipped on everything else so but perhaps her character is not even that important so it's like yeah whatever they want to get those wrestling fans in as soon yeah. as possible right gotta get him in there when is vince vaughn making his appearance in the mandalorian that's what i want to know oh, is bring yeah, vince vaughn in there yeah, yeah, yeah. vince vaughn playing anybody would be amazing <laughs> he's been in this season of curb and it's like he's just sort of he's kind of important but he's kind of like it feels like they were just shooting and he just walked on the set and he's like yeah I'll, I'll just do this and like he's not really he's like he sets up plots for the show, but that he, his character just sort of walks in, walks out. And you're like, oh, it's just Vince Vaughn. I mean, he is a character. He's not himself. He acts like himself. It's like, ah, oh, it's fine, yeah. Have you, see, have you seen Swingers? Yeah. That's Made? Have you seen Made? Yeah. You know how I feel about Made. Watch yeah, Made. I know. You bring it up every third podcast. Watch. I'm just, I want people to watch it. Yeah. Watch Made. I love Made. Why don't you make them? We, one, one week, we're going to put up episode 167, and it's just going to be Made. <laughs> I mean, nothing is just be Made. <laughs> but to get past the YouTube copyright claims, it'll be us dubbing the voices in there <laughs> the whole time. Like, uh, Made is great. Screech is in Made, if you haven't seen it. Screech. Columbo. Columbo. Screech. Funka Jansen. Puff Daddy. Huff, Phase on love from Elf fame. The manager and <laughs> <in> Elf. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, no, that's just great. Uh, Mandalorian season two finished production. Gina Carano finished, I think, on Saturday. And I guess everybody else finished on Sunday. Uh, she's having the time of her life on this. Do you want her to be spun off into her own show? Are you happy with her uh, just uh, being with mm. the Mando? No, keep her there unless there's some cool character development. I just 
it i said it before it's so funny how they like pushed all these characters in and like are during like the actors they brought in for like press junkets and then they're like barely in the show yeah it's basically Pedro Pascal by himself a lot <laughs> and it's not even him half the yeah, time it's... Think about it, it's probably not all Pedro Pascal because like I'm sure sometimes he's not in that suit, it's uh especially for... his stunt double is I think John Wayne's like grandson oh yeah yeah so it's probably him for 90 percent and Pedro Pascal for 10 <laughs> they're like they had this scene where they took off the helmet and they're like hey Pedro <laughs> Can you come to yeah. set today? And he was like eating nachos. He's like, okay. <laughs> he gets that. He's like, paycheck. And he did it and left. That's how it works. I love that everybody loves being a part of this, though. Everybody is just like just having the time of their lives. I'm hoping the Kenobi series is like that as well, where everybody just ultimately yeah. loves it. I hope that's not turning into a disaster. I have faith in Deborah Chow, so I'm going to say it's not. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, things are Things are changing over at... It's Star Wars land for sure. Uh, speaking of which, cannot wait to visit Galaxy's Edge whenever, oh, whenever that happens. Yeah, you're going in a couple weeks. Oh no, you're not. Never Am mind. I? No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, cool. you're not. Originally, Goodbye. originally you had planned on going in January. Um, yeah. But then uh, George Lucas hates you, so you got kicked out. You were told no kid. I just kicked my. Ca- I just <laughs> kicked my camera. You're not allowed to go to Galaxy's Edge until August. Yeah, my sister got me a gift from it. I'm dying to see what it is. I haven't seen. It. I'm dying to see what this is. We need to. Uh, I need to get her to give it to me early because I really want it badly. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, if uh, you sh- <laughs> we should have said this off the top, please give us a like and a subscribe. And a reminder: you can listen to us wherever you get your podcast: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, iHeart Radio. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are there other places? I don't know. Do people listen to podcasts in other places, Brock? You're the podcast expert here. Did you say Stitcher? Yep. Uh, I'm out of ideas. And also, <laughs> and you can also join our Patreon group over on patreon.com slash Podcast, where you get early access and exclusive shows and our patreon subscribers every single week bring us this segment we call never (laughs) never tell me the odds (laughs) it's odd season Uh, today's odds are brought to us by patreon thank you for all of your support and everything you do it means a lot to us you're not on camera you're not on camera anymore brock it's up it's the full screen never tell me the odds and our patrons are Heidi Fetter, Barry Brophy, Dennis Allen, Mary Kristen Athon, Jeff Wilson, Aaron Quinton, Al Schuler, Phil Staniford, Jana Rubio, Angel, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel Alford, I started reading and laughing, <laughs> Austin Jer, Scott D, Andy Higgins, Josh Price, Mason Hope, Matt W, Rez, Rural Farm Boy, Frank Perkins, Sooner Thrawn, Neil Lowry, D, Raven Spencer, Charlie Skywalker, Gleek Play One, Kayla Davis, Automated Joy, Charlotte Mariah Weakland, Jared Cocaine, Girls with Sabers, who by the way, Brock, told me what their their lightsaber colors would be if they had them. Oh yeah. Just give me a second, that's gonna take some time. Uh Luthien Purple, because it's just all around powerful and badass. And Emrys very, very simply said, white saber staff. <laughs> and of course, the Den of Nerds. Josh wouldn't have a lightsaber. He would have, uh, well, he would just be 3PO. <laughs> Coming for you. Uh, all right, today's odds. Thank you, Patreon. If you want to join us, patreon.com slash rebel scum podcast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, first odd, Brock, the odds of... I'm going to change it up a bit, so bear with me. The odds of Doug's appearing in the High Republic. Will a Doug appear in the High Republic? Sure, why not? I mean, I feel like they, they're a slightly unused character, so put them in. They don't even have to be pod racers. I'm going to say... 
I'm going to go 63.7521%. Be- <laughs> Jenny, Jenny. Because as much as I want to see Dougs, I don't know if anybody else cares about them, especially the people at Lucasfilm that are writing these books. I don't know if they care about Dougs. I think you have to have a special uh, love for them, and I don't know if they do. That's not a knock on them. They have, they probably have aliens that they love that I don't love that they're going to write about. That's they're allowed to do that. Uh, next, the odds of the next Star Wars theatrical composer composing all saga films going forward in the franchise will there be one composer taking the reins from john williams and going forward with all future star wars films to come i will tell you this this has nothing to do with this odd but if they got uh, i cannot pronounce his name from the mandalorian to do all disney plus star wars shows i would be okay with that because i feel like he is now the john williams of disney plus star wars well, they have one composer going forward for the future films. I don't see why not. Because I guess if you can, if you can find someone of John Williams' fame, then go with that. But like, why not? Like, it's sort of. I know for some people, music is huge, and I agree. Like, what John Williams did was like crazy like that how good it is in the thing i i think if you i don't know it's music for me in star wars is sort of like i could care i kind of care and i kind of don't like i mean there are stuff there's parts of it that i'm like oh yeah um i'm going to say though because people seem to be fickle and jump from project to project it's probably gonna 40 percent that they'll retain one uh composer for the whole thing i don't, I don't think it's gonna happen i'm gonna go full brock though because i would like it mm. to be uniform like that and stick with it um i would also like one you know one storyteller like a george lucas would be very nice as well to keep it all uniform and and, and whatnot but uh, i gotta go full brock because i just you know the, the first one out of the gate that's not john williams might be a clunker we might mm. cut like if you remember rogue one we left rogue one people were like yeah the music was okay but rogue one like the me rogue one's not really dependent on the music but the next film if it doesn't start big like star wars starts big people might take notice of them be like well why didn't it start off like star wars and then maybe that composer's like you know has wet feet going into the next one or cold feet cold feet or what just want to get to the next one and you know, so I'm going to go full Brock on the composer part of it all. Do you think they'll still start with the the usual Star Wars theme, though? Like, even though it's like, you know, like, why not start it with it? I, I feel like, it I, think they, all, you know? I think they should. Mm. I think they should. I just don't think, I don't think they will. I think Rogue One should have. I think Solo, especially Solo, the way I think started. Like, why didn't I just start with the... You know, we we go into Star Wars... Whenever you talk to people who saw Star Wars for the first time, it's that moment the cat that grabs them, right? It's Star Wars is on the screen and the music is big and uplifting. And and you feel... You're so into it because of that score off the bat that the movie could suck after that. You're in it. You're in it right from the get-go. So I think I think they should 100% put the music in. Put the Star Wars theme in Star Wars. And our final odd today, you think so? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, the final odd today, the odds of a future Star Wars video game set in the era of the High Republic. Oh, uh, yeah. 95%. I think it's just a no-brainer. I mean, if the High Republic, if they're doubtful to ever go to like a film or a, ser- a live series or something like that. Just make a video mm-hmm. game. I think, uh, you know, they already, an- I believe they announced they're doing a sequel to Fallen Order. Yeah. So, and that exists just by itself. So that's fine. So why not? <laughs> why not make it? And then it would make sense with all these character designs that you keep seeing. It's like, oh, maybe they're going to do something. It could just be comics. I could totally understand. But like, I don't know. I'm 
I think it would be silly they're, to not do that. They're throwing so much at this, like quality at this, which is yeah. great, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But if you're going to go through all that trouble for novels, I kind of feel like maybe it's a small waste of, of resources in the long run. Hollow news, da 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 da. Hollow news, it's hollow news. It's this week's hollow news. Hollow news. By the way, Brock, mm-hmm. everybody loves my rendition of the hollow news theme. Mm-hmm. Um, and Aaron did it on episode 159. Cool. And uh, that's what I have to say. About and Heidi said that Aaron did it better than I did. And uh, she has now been fired as executive producer. <laughs> She's now. She's fired. She is. Now associate producer. associate producer Heidi Fetter, uh, because my singing is the reason why we've been losing views weekly on this. Mm-hmm. All right, Brock, give us the hollow. Well, if you watched our live stream, we've already kind of talked about this, but here we are. So it was released earlier this week that a uh, creature was developed for Rise of Skywalker in and was seen in the montage of Kylo on Mustafar. Uh, but then it was cut, and someone was one of the effects guys was really excited about it. Uh, where is his name here? Da, 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 da. Of course, why would I? Why would I? Oh, Neil Scanlon. Uh, he mentioned this character while being interviewed. It was a. Uh, when Kylo finds the Wayfinder on Mustafar, and while there, the original plan was him to confront a spider-like being called the Eye of Webbish Bog. Now, if you Google that, you can see a couple of concept arts, and I think there's an actual picture of that, because they did shoot this scene, where he, and it's kind of neat. I, I expected it to be like some weird massive thing, but it's legit. Kind of looks like a Nithorian with like spider legs, and it's on top of something, which I bet is a psych out and it <laughs> that part it's something that's below the ground and then kylo fights it so uh it looks kind of cool but it was cut from the movie and uh, neil scanlon said he was hoping that perhaps it would be in there he said we actually did build it and we took it to a place called black park in the uk which is close to pinewood studios where we shot in a lake on location and that sequence exists unfortunately he didn't make it to the movie Oh, story, plot-wise, etc. It was a full practical character shot in a location, and it is amazing. And his hope is that perhaps they could put it in the Mandalorian, because it exists as a physical thing. It's not CG. It's a fun, practical puppet. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. So check it out. Neat little content. Perhaps we'll see a deleted scene. Perhaps not. Who knows? And it's in sad news that actor Max von Sydow has passed away this week. He at on Monday, I believe, he on the age of at the age of 90, he has passed away, confirmed by his family. You might know him from a little movie called Star Wars: The Force Awakens, where he played Larsen Tekka. But he is also known for his great movies like The Seventh Seal, The, the Exorcist. He was in season six of of. Uh, Game of Thrones, and then he even voiced the Knight Esburn in one of my favorite games, Skyrim. So he will be truly missed, but he lives on forever in the films that he has made, which are over a hundred movies and TV shows. And his character is currently in Rise of Kylo Ren, so hopefully we get to see some more Larsen Tekka. And in final news, uh, uh, Doctor Strange director Scott Derrickson uh, tweeted this week that he has an idea for a Star Wars film. It's called Ha, and it's a Star Wars film with a horror twist. It's, uh, he wrote, I was just asked what kind of Star Wars movie I would make. I answered that I would make Hoth, an R-rated frozen planet horror film in the vein of The Thing or Lovecraft in the Mountains of Madness with zero connection to any previous characters or storyline. So that's fun, because I would love to go back to Hoth. Um, apparently he's deleted this tweet, so I don't know if he got in trouble or he just like, no, 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 I do not want to talk about this, but that's fun. And it's just always fun to hear director. There's no truth to this if it will be made, but it's fun to hear people talking about, oh, I would make this Star Wars movie and then I wouldn't connect it in it. Cause like, let's just exist in that, that world. And this is, uh, this is it for hollow news. The news you need to know. Thank you very much.
Almost 160 Hollanders is Brock. Almost 160. Before we get to top five, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to see this yet on the Rebel Scum Detours channel, but you can go there to watch this video on its own. But we are going to go over because Andrew Fantasia has some thoughts on High Republic that we wanted to share with you. So let's go send it over to the one who will never be canon, Andrew. Hello, scumbags. I'm Andrew Fantasia, and I've got the high ground welcome to high ground thanks for watching as usual if you like high ground if you like us if you like the rebel scum podcast network if you like rspn detours do all the subscribe and hit that plus uh plus subscribe hit that bell whatever that bell's called i think it's just called a bell follow us on facebook twitter instagram and patreon if you want cool exclusive content it's like our normal content but we all wear fake mustaches and tuxedos because we, we just wanted to, to be swanky. Bang for your buck. We're here today to talk about the High Republic. It's the high ground of the High Republic. Two highs for the price of one. So Project Luminous was finally revealed to the public. Now for the longest, longest time, I thought Project Luminous was going to be the sequel to this. Remember this? I loved this. And it was made for the 40th anniversary of A New Hope. And this year is the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back, so I thought, hey, maybe that's what Project Luminous is. It's going to be another 40 short stories by 40 authors that's just set during Empire. I still really hope they do that because this was a really fun book. But hey, what we got ain't half bad either. All right, so let's talk about this High Republic business. Let's get into the nitty gritty of it. So from what they have announced, High Republic is an interconnected multimedia series that is going to tell one complete story through a various array of mediums. Brock and James have brought this up many times before already, but this whole concept just takes me right back to 1996 or seven, I can't remember now, when Shadows of the Empire became a thing. That was just a glorious example of Star Wars using its multimedia aptitude to the nth degree. You got your book. You got your Steve Perry book that he wrote, Shadows of the Empire. That's your starting point. That's the, the, the fulcrum of everything. Hey, fulcrum, there's a Star Wars word. Then in the book, some things happen. And there's this guy named Dash Rendar. And he runs off and he leaves the book for a long time to go do some stuff. And you're like, where did Dash go? The answer? N64 had the answer. They tell you where Dash went, baby. You grab that controller and that joystick and you press start and you are deciding where Dash goes. That was really cool. Then, guess who else shows up in that fulcrum novel? Boba Fett. Boba Fett's around very, very briefly, but you know Boba Fett is up to something. So what happens? Dark Horse Comics happens, and they give you a Boba Fett comic. You could have actually read that if you subscribed to Nintendo Power around that time, because they were cross-pollinating there. Nintendo had the game, so they said, hey, put your comic in our magazine, everybody's friends. In my opinion, Star Wars is the perfect perfect platform to do stuff like this because that has been their mojo since they came out. Star Wars has always been not just the movies. It's been toys, comics, books, temporary tattoos, ironing boards, car seats. It's been everything. There's probably a BB-8 baby car seat out there right now that somehow is canon. So then along comes Lucasfilm Story Group and Disney and they're like, hey, we got this Project Luminous thing. It's going to be really dope. And then they announce what it is and the other day we got our full slate just titles and very brief synopses and some author reveals as well there, there, there's juicy info in here but they give you just a taste so very quickly i'm just going to go over the five titles that were announced under the high republic banner okay so we've got the high republic light of the jedi by charles soul which is a novel the High Republic, A Test of Courage by Justina Ireland, which is a junior novel. The High Republic, Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, which is a young adult novel. Star Wars, The High Republic, very plain and simple title. A Marvel comic book series by Kavan Scott. And finally, Star Wars, The High Republic, Adventures, an IDW comic book series by Daniel Jose Older. Now there's a couple things I find really interesting about this. First and foremost, they were smart enough to try to cover as many bases as possible. We got five different things announced, and all five of them are in a somewhat different medium. A junior novel, a young adult novel, a straight-up regular adult novel, a comic book, and 
a young comic book. Everybody's getting a taste. No matter what kind of reading you like to do, there is going to be at least one High Republic thing that you're going to want. Personally, I know for sure that I'm grabbing that comic book, I'm grabbing that Claudia Gray young adult novel, and I'm grabbing that Charles Soule Light of the Jedi novel. All of those look fantastic. The next thing I find really interesting is that the authors here, some of them are playing against type, aren't they? The novel, the big adult novel, is being written by Charles Soule, who primarily up until this point has been a comic guy. Charles Soule has written arguably some of the best comics in the new Star Wars canon. I love the stuff he's been doing. He did the Lando comic. He did, I think he's doing the Kylo Ren comic. But here they have him doing a novel. On the flip side, Daniel Jose Olvera, whose only contribution to canon so far that I'm aware of has been the novel Last Shot. They have him doing a comic. The kid's comic, to be exact. Granted, I have read Last Shot. It is... Not amazing, so maybe they're testing him in different waters to see how he does there. I don't know. Now let's talk about these covers, these images that Story Group is throwing at us, because I gotta admit, I think they are beautiful. I love how bright and colorful they are. These colors remind me of Easter. You know, that the pastel Easter colors, the soft yellows, the mint green, the pink and purple and blue. It's very, very reminiscent of Easter. Like, th this whole... All these pictures with all these lightsabers, it looks like you just cracked open a bag of Cadbury mini eggs and just put lightsabers in every egg's hand. Eggs don't have hands, but you know what I'm trying to say. The cover for IDW Adventures, let's start with this. This looks like it's a work in progress. I don't think this is going to be the actual cover that just looks like concept art for two main characters. But hey, they look great. I love the capes. We haven't seen a good solid cape in Star Wars in a long time. Sorry, Kylo Ren, your cape was not, you know the best. It was okay, but this is a cape. What that girl's wearing on the right, that's a cape. I, I, I love it. I love the way it looks. Moving on to the High Republic comic by Marvel, what we have here on the cover, again, I don't know if this is the final cover or not, but we have a peek at the new villains of the High Republic story there called the Nile. Uh, I am going to assume they are nihilistic because it's spelt the same way, and they've been described by story group as, quote, space vikings. Check this out, man. That looks really, really cool. I love the look. I love how, how their helmets are just these, these bestial helmets. Now, what's interesting to me is the Nile, we have not seen any art of them carrying lightsabers. All the Jedi we've seen with lightsabers, the Nile just have guns and other assorted implements of destruction. So if this is the case, if these guys truly are the main threat, how are they going to stand up to lightsabers? That's what I want to know. Because see that rifle that red guy's holding? All a Jedi has to do is... Cut that rifle in half, and the guy now has one less rifle. So, do they have some kind of weaponry like Grievous's guards where they can stand up to a lightsaber? I can't wait to learn more about these Nile folk. And, you know, just between you and me, I know they're not adapting Knights of the Old Republic anytime soon, but my favorite character from the Knights of the Old Republic games was Darth Nihilus. This guy right here. Uh, and the naming is very similar. I don't know if they're going to do anything with Darth Nihilus. But uh, the name got me excited, so hey, you never know. Moving on to Justina Ireland's A Test of Courage. This is a junior novel. Uh, you can tell just from the art that it's a junior novel. It's uh, much uh, brighter, more vibrant art there. Now, this looks like a really cool picture. Like, I love that. And again, check out the guy in the background with the blue lightsaber. Dude's got a cape. He is rocking a cape. Now, I don't want to jump the gun here, but check out that droid in the bottom right corner. That looks a lot like M.E., who is the droid that works in Maz Kanata's castle. She is essentially Maz's uh, Chewbacca. She is the, the right-hand droid of Maz Kanata. In all the supplementary material, that droid is described as being pretty much as ancient, if not more ancient, than Maz herself. So could this be the very same droid? I don't see why not. I think that'd be a neat little connection. You could still have it all feel, you know, cohesive without having to have Skywalker characters in it. I also think it's cool that this girl in the front here, who looks like she's going to be our lead character, has green skin, which is neat. We haven't seen a, a good green-skinned character in Star Wars in a long time. And she's got a purple lightsaber. Now, I'm going to get more on this later, but it's nice to see somebody other than Windu 
rocking the purple. Next, let's move on to Into the Dark, the Claudia Gray young adult novel. Uh, now, I'm going to admit, of all the artwork we've gotten for High Republic, this is probably my least favorite. I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's just, I don't think it's a very dynamic cover. Like, this doesn't look like the final cover of a book. You know, it just looks like concept art. Beautiful concept art, though. Now, this guy's name here, this Padawan out front with the green, it says his name is Wreath Silas. Great Star Wars sounding name. Not my favorite name of the new stuff, though. There's an even better name that got announced. But uh, the summary of this one says that he's being sent from the cosmopolitan galactic capital of Coruscant, which means we're going to see Coruscant again, to the undeveloped frontier. I'm on board, and it's Claudia Gray. What's not to love? This book is going to be phenomenal. Last but certainly not least, we have Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule here. Uh, now this uh, front and center leading lady, uh, her name has been announced as Avar Chris, And that is my favorite Star Wars name that we've heard in this High Republic uh, announcement here. I think that's just such a cool name, Avar Chris. I already want a black series of this lady. Like, look how cool she is. She's rocking capes. Again, we got capes all over the place here. And they have these interesting white Jedi robes. Again, the color palette is just stunning that they've been using so much bright light and bright atmosphere to everything. She's got that tiara thing, which to me is very, very reminiscent of the Legends Old Republic stuff. I find that in a lot of the artwork for Old Republic characters in Legends, they were always wearing some kind of thing like that, like a tiara or a crown or something. Whether it was people like Ula Keldroma or Exar Kun or Nomi Sunrider, all those old school Legends characters, they all kind of rocked a similar style. And it's nice to see that the Jedi style itself, Jedi fashion, has changed throughout the years. They're not wearing the big heavy brown robes that we saw in the prequel trilogy. This is, this is 400 years earlier. Fashion changes. Just look at the 80s and 90s and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And what's great about this cover is every single person is rocking a slightly different lightsaber. Avar Chris has this green one. Again, I'm so happy to see green. The dude behind her, the human guy, he's got a blue one. The Twi'lek in the background has a yellow one, which is great, which means he must be Rey's father. It's confirmed. You heard it here first. And then he got this Wookiee, who's got everybody very excited, particularly Brock. I'm 90% sure Brock is still running laps around the city of Toronto after seeing this image. He's got a blue one, but he's got a cross guard blue one. He's got a blue Kylo Ren cross guard lightsaber. My God, is that exciting. And once again, that right, like th th these are four black series that I already want. And I have no idea if I'm going to like any of these characters yet. I don't even know what they're doing, who they're fighting. If uh, this whole book could be about a picnic for all I know. I just want those four toys on my shelf. Like that's freaking gorgeous. All right, but enough gushing for one day. This, uh, this news of the High Republic is just a really neat addition to canon at the end of the day. I love how they're pulling all their resources together and trying to tell this one big story through all these different channels. I really hope that they take advantage of that. I really do. I hope they take advantage of it even more than Shadows of the Empire did. What do I mean by that? Well, plain and simple... In that Light of the Jedi book that I just showed you, let's say Avar Chris has a conversation with somebody named Maxwell. I don't know. And, and Maxwell is, uh, is a robot, is a droid, who's going to go work on this other ship. And uh, Maxwell leaves. We only see him in one chapter in Light of the Jedi. But Maxwell goes and works on a ship. And that adventure that Maxwell has is part of that IDW Junior comic that Daniel Jose Older is writing. That's... The kind of cross mojo I want to see. And whatever those people are doing in that IDW comic, whatever mission they're on, let's say they have to find a, a, a pirate and ask him for information. That pirate is going to give them info and then they're going to radio uh, the people from Claudia Gray's Into the Dark thing and be like, hey, this pirate just told us that if you go to this planet, you're going to find this temple and it's going to have the MacGuffin we're looking for. And then the people in Claudia Gray's book are going to be like, okay, set course for that temple. Thanks, IDW characters. That's the world I want to live in. And when you have the talented writer's pool that these people have, I think it's only a matter of time until we get to that world. Speaking of the writer's pool, one last thing I want to go over before we cut to the chase here. And by cut to the chase, I mean end. James sent me this very interesting picture, which is the whiteboard in the writer's room during production on High Republic. Now, this whiteboard is split into three columns, which I think is really neat. Fiction, Star Wars, 
and Star Wars Wishes. And I think it's a really interesting thing to see what they have put into each of these columns. In fiction, they have put down the point form notes authentically lived in, surprise, diversity, actual ending, which is nice. Yeah, it took Star Wars 42 years to get to one of those. Feelings, relatable characters, sweeping slash epic, and humor. Par for the course. That's why it's under the fiction category, because that is something that should be in every good work of fiction. Then we move on to the Star Wars column. Not pro-war. Yeah, makes sense. War is bad. We all know that. Droids. Mm-hmm. Scope. Uh, everybody uses mouthwash in Star Wars. Mythic. Very much so. Space and lightsaber battles. Yes, please. No single main character. I love this. The Force and complicated monsters. I think there was a 90s punk rock band called Complicated Monsters. If there wasn't, somebody missed out. Finally, Star Wars Wishes. So these are the things these writers want to see in Star Wars. High Republic. Okay, well, we know where that went. Relic Hunters. Mm-hmm. Dr. Aphra's doing it. Luke and Lore Santeca did it, even though we're apparently never seeing that happen. University. Very cool. Again, we saw touches in Dr. Aphra. Dinosaurs. Look, in Mandalorian, they mentioned the legendary mythosaur. So we know they were a thing. And for all we know, there's hundreds of thousands of planets out there. There's probably dinosaurs roaming around somewhere. Representation slash diversity. Uh, they had that in fiction too. Sure, of course. Arthurian legends. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take my money. Rival houses. This is interesting. Um, I, just for fun, uh, back in January, I started writing a spec script, a Star Wars spec script for a non-Skywalker Star Wars adventure. Just for fun, just for giggles, just as a writing experiment for myself. And I started toying with the concept of rival houses, which is what the whole script is based off of. So I'm just saying, story group, if you need, if you're hiring, you know, I'm available. Sith Empire, yeah, we all want to see what that looked like. Chaos Agents, I don't know what that is, but it sounds deadly. And finally, Splinter Group Force Wars. This is all incredible stuff. And the idea of making that whiteboard, of making those three columns, I think that was such a smart move on their part. It shows that these people are really trying to dig deep into their own craft, figure out the best methods to piece all this madness together. Um, I, As much as I loved the sequel trilogy, I did. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I think these people are putting more work into the storytelling effort than was put into those three movies, I'm just saying. Uh, but this is great. I'm excited. You should be excited too. High Republic is going to knock everybody's socks off. Just our socks if we're lucky. Probably other pieces of my clothing are going to be removed the more of these books I get my hands on. And August is uh, when we have to wait. We have to wait till August to get the first one. At least that's the only date that has been made concrete so far. That's okay. I'm still waiting for those trade paperbacks for the end of Star Wars Volume 1 and Kylo Ren. So I can wait. I'm good. But I'm so excited for High Republic. And if it works, which I'm sure it will, I'm also excited for what comes next. In the same way that the Mandalorian was the test run, right? It was the guinea pig. They wanted to see how does a Star Wars show on a streaming service work week by week. They proved it works. So now they can get really creative and go all out with Star Wars streaming shows. Now I want to see that happen here. How does a publishing multimedia big event like this work? We haven't really tackled something like this before. If it works the way I think it will, we're going to see a lot more of this happen. And that gets me super stoked. So let me know in the comments what you think about High Republic. Is it everything you dreamed of? Is it nothing that you dreamed of? Do you still want that uh, Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view book? Because I know I do too. I'll take that as well. Why not? Anyway, that has been High Ground for the High Republic. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I'll see you around when I see you. I know I've been away from the live streams for a while, but I promise I'll be coming back to those once my work schedule stops getting all up in my grill. Until then, friends, enemies, everybody in between, may the force of others be with you. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos. Top five. Ooh. Oh yeah, Brock, you ready for today's top five? I'm always ready for top five. That's not true, Here's right? Here's five reasons. I've done the show with you where you haven't even known what the top five was and you made it up on the spot. Yeah.
correct. Several of them. All right. 160th episode. They uh, say uh, uh, <clears throat> the human torch was denied a bank loan. Out now, Brown. <laughs> Lanolin? Uh, t- top five female characters to headline a Disney Plus series. Nice. Top five female characters to coincide with International Women's Day on Sunday. Top five female characters to headline a Disney Plus series. Star Wars is right with uh, strong female characters. Uh, that would be exciting to see on screen once again in a series on Disney. And so my number five, I've got to start off with Jana. Bow and arrows, Brock. Bow and arrows. Bring her. Lando's daughter. You love it. Let's go. Jenna series. The Jenna show. Yeah. I would like to know more about how they got these uh, First Order Stormtroopers. So, yeah. She's a good yeah. doorway to that. That'd be great. Absolutely. Um, sidebar. Side act bar. Um, it would be cool if they did maybe an animation just so they can get all different characters of somehow. Yeah. Like. Heroes of Tomorrow show where they have like a time traveling ship where they can put Leia, Jin Arso, Padme all oh. together. And they jump from time to time. But no. Anyways, uh, my number five is going to be Zori Bliss. I'm very interested in her and I think she could have her own little maybe maybe it's a two hander with her and Poe. Mm. But talking about Poe when he was a spice runner. That'd be cool. I'd be down for that. Hundred. And of course, Baba Fritz. Baba would have to show up, absolutely. My number four, Brock, this uh one character was destined to make all of my list for the end of time. Zam Wessel. <laughs> Zam Wessel, the greatest bounty hunter of all time. I hope the Bounty Hunter Guild, the guild mentioned Zam in season two as like the greatest bounty hunter. Of, a, of their generation. That's what I'm hoping for. Zam Wessel killed by Django Fett. <laughs> uh, my number four is going to be Dr. Afra. I was going nice. To higher, I think she needs to be on here. I think that it's an untapped resource that they could really play up. Uh, but yeah, she's great. If you haven't read any Dr. Afra, check it out. Uh, just her solar series i think it's the original vader that she gets inter uh, introduced in but it's it's a it's a story that's just perfect for disney plus in my opinion uh absolutely my number three and fist nest yes my number three is Emphy nice it's just like <laughs> that it's such an like this character they develop in that movie and you're like Whoa, yeah. who is that and then it turns out it's a woman and there's just like she takes the helmet off and there's this moment where you're like who is that yeah. <laughs> but it's I think could be very interesting especially if a story revolved around her like to introduce the beginnings of the rebellion exactly and she could have like guess like you, you know supporting cast of, of Warwick Davis and uh, mm-hmm. and Tubes and all my favorites for sure my number two <laughs> Lady Proxima. <laughs> I love it. I love Why it. Not? Everything about Lady Proxima is great. Like, yeah. That whole storyline's like all over twist, man. Exactly. <laughs> Let's it. get more. I will watch that entire series. The Lady Proxima show. Moloch, uh, her her supporting character there. That is what I want. Now we're approaching two and one. I'm going to say to people, Padme's not on my list. Leia's not on my list. Jin is not on my list because we basically heard her yeah, entire yeah. story. But like I, those characters, as much as I would like it, it's just we I think they have enough spotlight time. So my number two is going to be Kira because Ooh. you know I love the solo movie. I, if I love Lady Proxima, you know I love Kira. So I'm yeah. curious who your number one is because my number one is Kira. What was your number two? Was that Proxima? Proxima. I went really high on Proxima. I went all in on Proxima. I was like, <laughs> let's go Proxima. I want like Kira number one because I want more Kira. I want more Maul. I want to know all of that. Our good yeah. friend Rachel posted on on Patreon, I believe, 
an idea with Kira, which we will talk about next week. That's on next week's show. And it's a great idea for Kira uh, and Maul and all of that. And I, I love Kira. I love Maul. I want to see more of that. Give me it all. Throw it on there. My top three are all solo related. What does that tell you? Bring it. Make it happen. Brock. You're a fool, James. You are a fool. The future is Ahsoka. Ahsoka makes the money. See, I didn't put it. Here's a, I don't have Ahsoka because I think that's coming already. Mm-hmm. So I kind of went with ones that like aren't. Yeah, like I, I, I mean, obviously Ahsoka would be number one if if I didn't believe it was on its way. It's just yeah. I would love to see more Din Erso, but like we're kind of stuck in Erso. Or we got in Group One, so. I mean, you could do younger Jin Erso, which might be fun. But again, we're getting young Cassian. How many? How many young do we need to go with these characters? Actually, you know what? Like, Emphy's Nest. You could really bring in Sagarera on that. Yes. Too, right. Cause two opposing sides of of this rebellion growing. Uh-huh. Oh. There's a lot. Saw Guerrero, I like that he's becoming the glue that's holding this new era of Star Wars together. We need a character. Yeah. We have Saw. Bring in Saw Guerrero. Yeah, Saw. I love it. The young Saw Guerrero series is coming up. All right. This has been the 160th episode of the Rebel Scum wow. Podcast. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. Listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a like, a subscribe, and a review on Apple Music, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. <laughs> everywhere. Uh, do it up. You can follow us on on places where you can follow us, which are, uh, where are we, Brock? There you can follow. Facebook. Facebook. Twitter, uh, Instagram. Facebook. Instagram. Grindr. Twitter. What? Hinge. Raya. We are everywhere. We are not at Galaxy's Edge, but we will get there. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks to Andrew for doing the High Republic video. Not really. We don't care about him. Thanks for all of you for watching, for, for chatting along with us in the premiere chat to the side. It uh, means a lot to us every single week. Uh, and Brock, yeah. you were always scum. <laughs> Rebel scum. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.